development of urogenital system this model is depicting that this is the anterior plane we can see one structure the urinary bladder and urethra the urinary bladder is developed from urogenital sinus it is endodermal cloaca anterior portion of the endodermal cloaca after separation from the rectum from urorectal septum it is called as urogenital sinus the entire urinary bladder is developed from lining of the urinary bladder developed from endoderm of the urogenital sinus except the small triangular area which is blue color here which is the trigone of the bladder it is developed by the incorporation of the mesonephric ducts the mesonephric duct mainly contributes to the male genital duct system it is also called the wolfian duct before this gets incorporated the mesonephric duct will give rise to one bud called the ureteric bud which grows upwards and divides dichotomously within the kidney to give rise to the pelvic calicial system which is the collecting system of the kidney here we can see the metanephric blastemal cells which are aggregating to give rise to the filtration and tubular system of the kidney which is includes the renal corpuscle or the malpighian corpuscle which is nothing but the bowman's capsule and the glomerulus and pct dct loop of henle and collecting tubules it's developed from metanephric blastema which is a part of intermediate mesoderm this projection from the apex of the urinary bladder is called as allantoic diverticulum or the uracus it is remnant in adult is called as median umbilical ligament here we can see the posterior part of the endodermal cloaca has formed the structure called as primitive rectum okay it gives rise to the future rectum up to the level of the pectinate line the urogen the cloacal membrane which is that portion on the tail end of the embryo where only ectoderm and endoderm is there there is no mesoderm this is very thin and delicate this cloacal membrane is now split into three areas the anterior portion called the urogenital membrane the rupture of this give rise to the opening of the urinary and genital tracts urogenital membrane okay posteriorly it's called the anal membrane which is attached to the pectinate line below the pectinate line the anal canal is developed from ectodermal anal pit okay so the rupture of anal membrane give rise to the continuation of the gat to the exterior okay between the urogenital membrane anteriorly and the anal membrane posteriorly this area give rise to one pyramidal shape body it's a fibromuscular body it's a connective tissue body it's called the perineal body which supports the all the pelvic organs by anchoring all the muscles which are attached to the pelvic outlet it's called the perineal body the intermediate portion of the cloacal membrane becomes the perineal body it will be there in this wedge shape area in the white color it will be there for as to that perineal body so in summary the endodermal cloaca anterior portion urus to urogenital sinus contributing mainly to the urinary bladder except the trigone and the genital system the lower membrane is called urogenital membrane rupture of this connects the urinary and genital tract to the exterior the posterior part of endodermal cloaca forms the primitive rectum up to the level of pectinate line below that level it is developed from ectodermal anal pit the anal membrane which is attached to the level of pectinate line will rupture to connect the gat to the exterior the gastrointestinal tract will be connected to the exterior amidst the two that is the urogenital sinus anteriorly and the primitive rectum posteriorly there is a pyramidal shaped body called as perineal body where the fibromuscular node gains the attachment of muscles which are there at the level of the pelvic outlet including the muscles which are there in the superficial and deep perineal pouches thank you for watching and learning from logic medico if you are new to our channel kindly consider subscribing kindly press the thumbs up icon and share this video with your other friends thank you for your support